dad's friend left Eagle's descent engine on the lunar surface and flew home to planet Earth, that's when I realized the closest I would ever come to that feeling of weightlessness, exploration, and freedom in our world could only come from being underwater. Catalina Island, only 30 miles away from the mainland, provides exciting cave diving and what I call fast food adventures. It's close to the isthmus, easy to get to, and lots to see. Many dive boats stop here as one of their usual locations for scuba certification checkout dives. I always try to get to the island a day or two early from my friends' arrivals, which gave me time to settle in and prep for the weekend events. Our cast today includes Steve DeGroote, number 64, his favorite number, was a friend and owner of CFAB, a marine custom fabrication company here in Costa Mesa, California, and also his diving buddy, Zachary Story, a fireman from Santa Barbara, and me, a diver who can't wait to try out his new camera. Hi friends, Mike Anderson here. I found this video time capsule forgotten and buried in my file cabinet for three decades. It was my first high A cassette tape and it had one word on the label, scuba. Until then, I'd been shooting still underwater photography for over 20 years, but now I wanted to capture those colorful little critters in motion like Jacques Cousteau. At least that's what I was hoping for. And with the new Handycam, that was the beginning of the end of emulsion film and the advent to videotape. The immediate results and affordability really made it attractive, and for me, I thought, oh, this ought to be cool. It was Steve's and Zach's first time diving in caves, so I thought it was a great opportunity to capture their first cave experience. Shallow caves, called Blue Caverns, is roughly the size of a family room with about six to eight foot overhead ceiling and about 30 feet wide. The depth of the caves average about 20 to 30 feet and extend inward about 30 to 40 feet. All color is green, blue, until you put a light on it, then BAM! colors like you would not never expected, and you savor the colors between breaths, all the while inching your way up and forward and being careful not to stir up the sand. You hear the tone and difference between your exhaust bubbles and the bubbles trapped on the overhead of the cave. They take on a deep thunder sound as they dissipate on the overhead. Then you may wonder, 
What about an earthquake right about now? Yikes. Sometimes poking around with your light, it's easy to let your imagination run off. And you see things differently with the claustrophobic confines of an underwater cave. Let's face it, it's the elevated excitement that comes with cave diving. As you make your way into the rear of the cave, that's where you'll find there's just enough room to wiggle between boulders to egress up to the tide pool in the rear. It's a little tight, but it's doable. Just down the way a little towards the isthmus is the Blue Grotto. As you descend through the thermocline, the water temperature drops and it reminds you you're at 75 feet of depth. With three large ominous images appearing side by side by side. And when the lights are flipped on, so does the UFO feel. The entrances are large with 20 to 30 foot ceilings. Plenty of room so as not to worry about messing up the silt at the bottom. They are spooky looking and would be the perfect picturesque location for shooting a pirate movie, complete with sunken treasure. Uh-oh, that can mean a few different things. Ah, Zach fooled me. I thought he was referring to sharks. These are the juvenile sheep's head and they're sparring with each other. The Slithering Mori Eel, one of my favorite subjects to photograph. Also one of the creepiest. Notice the red cleaner shrimp. They have a symbiotic relationship with the eel in that they pick out parasites off the eel and eat it and return get a good meal out of their efforts. I can't explain the tooth arrangement. One of the fun parts of diving in a new area is finding out what's around the corner. In this case, it's seals. Just like dogs ashore, they are dogs of the sea and usually playful and hamming it up with curiosity. They're always fun. What I find interesting in this first old videotape footage is the size and amount of the kelp beds we had back in 1991. And now, 30 years later, we see the kelp beds diminishing by way of the explosion of the sea urchin population, which has always been held in check by the sunflower starfish. Currently, it's declining due to a marine virus, and marine biologists concur that starfish disease seems to be associated with raised water temperatures. Without the starfish, the subsequent takeover by the sea urchins will result in leaving the kelp forest holdfast, vulnerable to attack, and loss of the kelp beds is crucial to all of us in that it has the ability to absorb CO2 from our atmosphere, just like trees do, but better. Kelp removes 20 times more carbon per acre than land forests do, and it grows two feet a day through photosynthesis. The other culprit that tag teams the decline of the kelp forest is the warm water, and specifically the El Nino current coming up from the southwest, infecting our cold California current, which the starfish and kelp require. So now kelp has little chance to protect itself from the sea urchins. So long as this trend continues, this imbalance of nature could result with kelp dying off. That's where there must be concern. What a shame for future generations if they lose such a natural, efficient carbon scrubber. Think about it. Throughout this film, you can see the amount of sea life that kelp supports.
Uh, yeah, sorry about the uh, self-indulgence here. Never be that young again, so why not? That was a fun weekend. Got a nice southerly blowing me back to Newport Beach. And the wind was just right as I set the wind vane and enjoy the ride. Good times. <laughs> 